Okay, can you guys hear me? Hello? You can, can you hear me? Is the mic working? Okay, cool. Hey, everyone. Okay, I'm trying to read the chats here. Hey, Crystal. Oh, let me turn my phone off. I'm echoing over here. Let's see who all's on. How do I see how many, who all's on here? Oh, I see now. You guys, I'm new to this, so you have to give me, or have a little patience with me. Okay, I got to turn these notifications on my laptop off. Hold on. There we go. Oh, you can't see who's watching. You can just see how many. Like, I can't see who. I can see that there's 11 people on right now. Hmm. I think it's got a lag. I think it's got a lag. Oh. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Oh, thank you, September Virgo. Okay, so it's easy to follow chat if you make sure you are on live chat instead of top chat. Okay, thank you. I didn't know that. Okay, there we go. Much better. <laughs> no, I think you're fine. Hi, Jamie. Sorry, just now saw your comment up there. Who else here? Say hi if you're here. Okay. Good to know, September Virgo. Why? Rude. Well, because I'm watching you right now. I can see the comments. Okay. Hi, everyone. So um, I wanted to talk about my dad's murder and answer any questions that you guys all have. Um, I did. Somebody did email me earlier today and asked why Mae Blevins wasn't being charged. Um, and I just want to say that she is being charged. I don't know where that came from. She's been charged with, um, not the murder, but she's been charged with arson, um, abuse of a corpse, tampering with physical evidence. And there was one other one. I think she got something with the, um, she got everything. She was charged with everything that Sandra was charged with, except for the actual murder. Although she was there when the murder happened. Um, tampering with physical evidence. Yes, you're right, Crystal. Yep, you're right, September Virgo. Okay, so for those watching that don't know, my dad was Steve. Faison, um, from Bigelow, Arkansas, and he was murdered at his home in his backyard near a fire pit area. Like, a, he lived on the river. Um, the area where he was killed is he had an outdoor building that was like a recreational entertainment building and a big fire pit and all of that right there on the face of the river. Um, on September 9th, well, actually it was September 8th, of 20 uh, September. I don't know why I keep saying September on February 8th of 2020. Um, Sandra Rappold came down to his place and I'm not really for sure why she came down there. Um, and not for sure who else she came with, but I do know that she was there. And then sometime later on in the night, they say he was killed on the ninth. So between midnight and two, three, four in the morning, um, she murdered him. And Mabel Evans was also there at the time of the murder with, um, supposedly by herself, she came after the murder. Ha or whenever she came down there, uh, Sandra had called her, she came down and that's when supposedly Sandra killed my dad and May was there and witnessed it. Afterwards, they, from what we've been told from prosecutors and that, they went back to Chris Carden's house, um, which Chris Carden's house is where Sandra Rappold lived. Sandra was dating Chris Carden at the time. Um, 
and Mabel Evans also lived there. So they went back to his house and they got a younger um, girl that lived there. I cannot say her name because she is a minor and had her come back down with them. And they proceeded to load up his body and they moved his body to um, Cardin Sod Farm to a dump site, just a, basically a pile of garbage that was in the woods out there on the Cardin Sod Farm proper, property. Now, there's been a lot of rumors and questions and stuff regarding all of that because my dad was a really big man. Those that knew him, you know, he was pretty stout. Um, and he was, even his autopsy report said he was over 200 pounds. Um, so I would say he was around one, between 180 and 200. But there's no way these girls loaded him up by themselves, in my opinion. Um, and took him down there. There were no drag marks, um, nothing like that where they would have drug him somewhere. Like he was lifted up, placed into a vehicle or into something and was carried down there. Um, we do know they used, once they got to where they unloaded his body, they used some kind of sheet or something to, from what we've been told, to drag his body out and into the dump site. Oh, I'd love to see Chris's cell phone. Okay, that's um, a really good point that you bring up, September Virgo. Would love to see Chris's cell phone pings during that time frame, she says. That was a big question that um, myself and many of our family members had. We had a um, Zoom conference call with the prosecutors, Jill Camps and Leanne. I cannot remember her last name because I always deal with Jill. Um, at Larry Jagley's office in Pulaski County. And one of my cousins, he did ask about Chris Carden's phone location at the time of my dad's murder. And they did say that they've investigated and his phone did ping to be at my dad's residence at the time of my dad's murder. But they said that he told them that Sandra had stolen his phone that night and apparently they believe him, but I mean, just me, if I'm going to commit a murder or if I was in on a murder and I realize, oh shit, my phone's there. Sorry for my language, but my phone's there. I might say somebody stole my phone too, whoever was down there. Right. I mean, common sense, but I mean, I can't really. I can tell you my opinions on all of that, but I can't say factual whether he was in fact there or not. Didn't they also text Chris while in the middle of all of this? I'm not sure. Did we hear that they texted Chris in the middle of all this? But see, his phone was there, or at least the prosecutors have verified or confirmed that his phone was there. It was pinging at that location. Um, whenever the murder happened. So I don't know how they would have texted him if he was there. I mean, if his phone was there, um, I'm sorry if I said he was there, I meant to say his phone was there. Um, I'm kind of a little bit nervous because first time doing this and also the first time like really talking about this in quite a while, I kind of put all of this on the back burner and just kind of let it be what it was going to be. Cause at the very least, he knew after they transported your daddy. Yes. Yes, they knew they told him to put him in the well first. And then they okay, him yeah. In the boat. You're right. Okay. At the very, okay. September Virgo says, at the very least, he knew after they transported your daddy. I mean, that's accessory after the fact. He should have contacted law enforcement immediately when he knew. Period. End of subject. You're right, September Virgo. But in my opinion, he knew they were there. He knew it was happening because this was all set up, it was all planned. And, but we do know that he did tell May and Sandra to put my dad's body in a well. Now, on, on their property, on the so Cardin Sod Farm property, they, um, those of you that are locals that live around there, you know, there's the railroad tracks run through there and the Fush River, which comes off of the Arkansas River. So right near the railroad tracks um, on their property, there is a man-made well. I believe it's man-made, right? No, it's not man-made. 
anyway, it's a large um, concrete uh, well, um, I guess maybe the railroad. I don't know what it's for, but it's yeah, we don't know what it's for. But anyway, Chris had told them to put my dad's body in that Thank well. God. They couldn't find it, so they put his body in the dump site instead. Now, if you're at that well and you look straight across from it, say you're on the railroad tracks and you look straight across from the well, you will see through the woods there, there's a big pile of garbage. That's where they put his body. Now, this was after some time that they put his body there. From what we've been told and what we know and believe to be true, his body was in the back of we believe Sandra's truck, the silver Dodge that she was driving at the time. We believe his body was in the back of that truck for quite a while. Um, at one time, they had put his body in a boat and tied cinder blocks around it. And they were going to take his body and dump him in the river. But fortunately, the boat would not start, so they couldn't do that. Sorry. Um. So they ended up putting his body in the dump site. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to keep up with the chat here. Exactly. So uh, are you aware that a few months ago they started filling in the wells? I didn't know that, but I will tell you that um, someone that also lived there around that time. That's really interesting to know, Crystal, that they started filling in the wells. Um, sorry, I've got something in my eye now. So, um, I'm not going to say any names, but most of you know, there was another person that was living at Chris Cardin's at that time. This person's came to my husband and I and talked to us and told us some things. Um, after several months of talking back and forth with him to try and see what information we could get, um, regarding this, because, you know, Sandra Rappold's the only one that's being charged right now. And we know there were a lot more people involved and they need to be charged and they need to be held accountable. What? Yeah. May needs to be charged for the murder too. You were there, May. You're a nurse. I mean, you took an oath to save a life and you watched a life bleed out and die. I'm sorry, but you should be charged. That's just my opinion. I mean, that's how I feel. That's what's fair. What's right. Um, but going back to what I was saying, so there's another person that lived at the Cardins who no longer lives there. And this person came to my husband and I, and he did tell us several different things. But about the wells, after several months of talking back and forth with him, he agreed to talk to the state police, to the investigators. And one of the things that he had told them is if you guys will go down there and you will check those wells, you will find bodies like there are things in those wells and no one will check. Why? Why not? Why didn't you guys, why didn't the state police investigate um, Chris Cardin's home? Why didn't they search his home? I mean, we know that they supposedly did an investigation on his property, but they didn't go in his home and investigate or search for anything. Why? I mean, it's all, there's so much surrounding this that doesn't add up that, um, and I'm not trying to speak badly or negatively about the state police, the investigators or the prosecution or any, anyone, because I honestly don't know how thorough they've done, but so far it doesn't seem like they've done on um, just, this is coming from me, my opinion. I don't feel that they've done a thorough job. I don't think it was thorough from the very beginning. Um, I think there's a lot of things that have been looked over that have been, <clears throat> just shoddy all around. I mean, um, my sister, you know, my dad has, um, I have another sister. Um, my dad has my brother Todd and my sister Amber and myself and my sister Amber, you know, when she came down right after the police let us back in onto my dad's property, you know, she was just looking around like the fire pit area and stuff where all of the blood was and where, the murder happened and she found a few different things, you know, she didn't know what anything was, but, um, months later, and this was several months later when they, the police and the game and fish commission dredged the river there by my dad's property. I guess they were looking for his phone. We'll get into that later. But, um, 
and the murder weapon also because they don't have that. But um, we saw in the warrant for that to search the river, it had a description of the knife. And that's when my sister realized, oh, my God, I have a piece of that knife. And she didn't have a piece of the actual knife, but it was a uh, pocket knife and had um, some certain design. But there was like a little square piece, like about that big, that she had found. And she didn't know what it was. She just was picking up stuff because, I mean, I can't really speak for her, but I'm thinking if she's thinking like me, like that might be something that they've overlooked, right? And it was. It was a piece of the murder weapon. And so we sent that to the state police, to one of the investigators and told them that, hey, we have this and we found this is where it was found. And, you know, pretty much you guys missed this. How did you miss this? And asked them if they wanted it. Well, um, one of the investigators, he actually, I guess, meant to message the or text the prosecutor, but he messaged me and said, saying, hey, um, Stacy has a part of the murder weapon or the knife, something along those lines. Do you think we need to get it? I don't think we do, but do you think we need to? And then I guess he realized, oh, I sent that to Stacy, Steve's daughter. And so he was like, I'm sorry, let me explain. And told us the reason why they didn't, they didn't want that piece of it is because, you know, it can be argued that we, that it was tampered with or whatever, which does make sense. And they said also they don't really need that. They don't need the murder weapon because she admitted to doing it. But um, is that the piece you said they just overlooked a major piece of evidence that many have mentioned? Wait, hold on. Let me understand what you're saying. Crystal says many people around Bigelow said that is where a lot of bodies are going back years. Yes, I've heard that too. I've heard that from several different people, Crystal. I can't say whether it's true, but do I believe it? Absolutely. 100%. Is that the piece you said they just overlooked a major piece of evidence that many have mentioned to you? That is the piece that I said they overlooked. They've overlooked a lot of things, in my opinion. Um, per, I don't know if it's purposely or not, but yeah, they've overlooked a lot. I don't know what you mean that many have mentioned to you. Yes, they should have done a better job. I'm still confused, Crystal, while talking to Sears. I mean, what? I don't know what you're saying. Okay, September Virgo says, wasn't there a party there that night? Or wasn't there a party that night during this? Yes, September Virgo. There was a party at Chris Carden's. We were told there were two different parties. There was earlier during the day, it was um, one of the Cardin or the Cardin sod farm, the brothers that own that farm, their father's birthday was that day and they were having a party for him. I believe, I'm not for sure if that party was at Chris Cardin's, but I do know it was down Kenny Road, down past my dad's. So I didn't mention this earlier because I'm talking as if everyone here already knows about this, but there might be some of you that don't or people that watch in the future that don't. But my dad lived on Kenny Road. It was um, a county road, a dirt road, and kind of ran along the Fush River, which runs off the Arkansas River. So down past my dad's place is where you'll find Chris Carden's house. And that right past my dad's actually becomes a private road. Um I believe it does. I mean, there's signs that say private road, so I'm guessing it is. But that's like my, mostly all the Cardins live down there or not all of the Cardins. Mostly the houses that are down there are owned by the Cardins or the land, property, whatever. As far as I'm aware of, I know the Cardins Odd Farm is down there past my dad's. Chris Cardin's home, which is right next to um, the Sod Farm. Gate, yeah, that's what I was saying. It's private property at the gate. Um, let me go back up here. Oh, I love you too, Crystal. Um, I'm I'm probably look so goofy trying to like read. I don't wear glasses, but I feel like I should. I'm having a hard time here. 
Okay, so there, now I'm back on my train of thought. I went south for a second. Okay, so yes, there was a party there that night. I don't know if the party was at Chris Carden's house, um, the first party for their father. Um, they call him Old Man Carden. Um, so it was his birthday or they were celebrating his birthday somewhere down there. I don't know if they were celebrating it. Um, another Carden's property down there or at Chris Carden's. But I do know that that night there was, it kind of shifted into a second party. Like uh, from what I was told, some of the people that were there earlier during the day had left and then different people, like a whole different um, crew came in, just different vibe. You know, the people they would normally um, associate with, maybe not so much family, but I do know there was some family, like Chris Carden's brother was there one of his brothers and his um, fiance wife and several other people, because several people have came to me um, and it's been so long. Like I said, I haven't, you know, really talked about my dad's murder or anything to do with it in quite a while, but not long after, you know, that first year and a half was, it was a whirlwind and I was getting messages and calls nonstop. Um, but a lot of them very helpful and informative. And a lot of people came to me with the same, you know, maybe a little bit of a different twist to it, but the same information about the party and who was there. And <clears throat> we've even, even been told that um, after they killed my dad, um, I hadn't gone into details yet of how he was murdered, but, you know, he, you know, they did amputate his genitalia and we were told that they, someone took it, had that in a Ziploc bag and took it back down there to the party and nailed it to a tree and everyone laughed and thought that was just great. And then they went back down to my dad's house and set his house on fire. I can't say for sure that the people at the party went down and watched the house burn, but I do know for sure that they did burn his house down. And I can tell you that it's been on set on record that Mae Blevins is the one who took, um, what are they called? The gat, yeah, the propane. Propane, propane bottles. Sorry, my brain tonight. Um, May Blevins took the propane bottles into my dad's house and turned them on. Or is that what you call them? Turning them on when you unscrew it? Okay. And I'm not sure who lit it, lit the fire. But um, we were also told that they, and this has been said on record too, I believe by May and Sandra both, that they went back to, now this is after they've killed my dad and I don't know if his body is still there or if they've moved his body yet, but they did both say that they went down to Chris Carden's house and they got cleaning supplies from Chris Carden, meaning he knew about it, right? I mean, we can't prove, and I guess they can't prove that's hearsay. They're both saying that they got the cleaning supplies from him. So that doesn't really prove anything, but I mean, come on. If, in fact, they did get the cleaning supplies from him, that means he was well aware, maybe if not at the time, that he was being murdered right after. So sometime before the fire was started and after he was killed. Let me go back over here to the quote or the comments. <laughs> Crystals that are more bad, never mind. So there should have been several people that should have and probably did know what happened to your daddy, in my opinion. Yes, I believe so. And I will get into um, here in just a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and read the rest of the comments. But if I don't get into this, you guys can remind me or we can talk about it in another video. But there was a witness that came forward to myself several, several months later. Um, I think just because... It had been eating at her, um, and I won't say this person's name at all because it would put this person's life in jeopardy, but did come forward and spoke with me and the attorney 
that we had at the time and gave us some information that I have felt all along, but it just kind of verified some things that this wasn't just a crazed woman that just decided to kill my dad. Like this was a setup. Um, and I'll get into that. Like it was pre-planned is what I mean. It was planned ahead of time before that day. In regards to the accusations that Sandra made against your dad, has the investigators been able to prove anything? Okay, so that's a good question. So the accusations Sandra made against my dad were BS. Bullshit. Um, and she said as much since. Um, there are some, I don't know if I put it on the Justice for Steve Facing group, but there... So she had to go have an act three evaluation done at the Arkansas state hospital. And while she was there, she still told her lies, but also a little bit more truth. Like, so the story she told the doctor when he was interviewing her at the state hospital was a completely different story than what she first told the police and investigators when she was first arrested. So first she said that, he had tried to rape her. There's been so many different stories that he was stalking her. BS. That he tried to rape her. BS. She didn't know him. I mean, they knew who each other were because of Chris Carden. Because my dad and Chris were, had been best friends for several years up until 2015 when Chris's wife Kelly died. And about six months later, they had a fallen out. And that's a whole nother story. But um, Sandra didn't no, no, my dad, like, and he had never heard of her or seen her until he saw her in 2015 at the Cardin's uh, residence or at the sod farm, whichever place, um, because her and Chris Cardin had a relationship soon after Chris's wife passed away and my dad had caught them doing meth and it really ticked my dad off. Um, he's not for any of that. Any of you that know him, you know, he was a good man, but like he had his opinions about those type of thing, things. And also Ke Kelly, Chris's wife had not been, you know, she hadn't been passed for that long. And it was just and a very, was her, his son's it was very disrespectful. And also what my dad had told me is that Sandra was actually dating, and this is back in 2015 when they had the fallen out. Sandra was actually dating Chris Carden's son, Tristan. And my dad viewed, like, that was like a second child of my dad's. Like, he loved Tristan as his own kid. And so that really, you know, whenever he caught Chris and Sandra together, I mean, he kind of lost it. You know, Kelly was my dad's best, best, best friend. Like, the best friend my dad's ever had and she was gone and Tristan was like my dad's son. And so it was like, what are you doing? You know, that's how he felt toward his best friend. Like, what are you doing? Like, you know, come on, man. And so they had a fallen out. And so Sandra didn't actually know my dad. Like she knew him from that. And then he kind of fell away from the Cardins um, and didn't have anything else to do with him. So he would see her like in passing, like going down the road or something, but as far as communicating with her, talking with her, no. Um, so her, you know, she did say that he tried to rape her. She said several different stories. She also said that he had driven down to where the party was and that he had made a comment to, I don't know if it was someone, that he had made a comment to a young girl, which I know is BS. My dad never drove past from 2015 when they had the fallen out on dad never drove past his property he never drove past his driveway he never drove down to where the cardins lived that's a fact you guys all know this the cardins anybody that's watching you know my dad didn't go down there he the reason she said that is one of the things i wanted to touch on tonight and i'll get into that in just a second because she thought that was going to i mean that was part of their plan you know say that He's been charged with these things in the past. So say this and it'll be a good cover up. Bull crap. So she did finally say um, when she was at the state hospital, she said, I didn't know this man from Adam. And you guys can go on there and read it. It should be on the Justice for Steve Facing Facebook group. You can read everything that she said. She did say some other like she said after she stabbed him that he turned and said, you bitch, I'm going to kill you. He didn't. She got his 
voice box, his artery, his jugular, like he couldn't say anything, you know? So, I mean, you can kind of, any smart person can read that and kind of weed out the truth and the lies. But she did finally say she didn't know him from Adam. So then what's your motive, Sandra? Why kill him? Why kill this man you don't know? You know, so give me one second. I got to get a drink. Um, okay. In regards to the ac accusation that Sandra made against your dad, has the investigation been able, investigators been able to prove anything? No, they haven't. And that's one of the things that we've been so frustrated with is we want a motive and we've wanted that from the beginning. What is the motive? And they keep saying that that's what she's trying to say is her motive, but they know that's not the motive. Well, then what is? Because you have to have a motive, right? There's one person, this one person that says they weren't there, that they had no involvement. The one person who hated my dad, who the one person that had any kind of animosity towards my dad, that person had motive, but Sandra didn't. So there you have it. Yes, September Virgo, I was. Um, it's hard to remember a lot of that year and a half because I was in shock. I was, I kind of lost myself really. I mean, my husband's here, you could ask him. Like, it was very difficult. It was going from a, just your normal everyday life to not only your loved one, your, your father's gone, but they've been murdered. And not only have they been murdered, but there's all of this craziness surrounding it. And then it, I just went down this rabbit hole. Like it, it led to so much more than just my dad's murder to several different things that, you know, it was scary. It was really scary um, dealing with all of that. I mean, I went and got my concealed carry license, learned how to shoot a gun, um, started carrying a gun with me. And, you know, it just, it wasn't just, it was crazy. It was wild. Um, who all was it at this party or does anyone know? I, I've heard, I can tell you the names that for sure I know were there, but I can't say anyone else definitively for one, because I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus. And I don't know for sure because I don't have, I wasn't there. I don't have proof. Um, but the party, it was told that, of course, Chris Carden was there because it was his house. Sandra Rappold, who's been charged with capital murder of my father, Mabel Evans. Um, someone they call Red, Duran Hart, um, was staying there. And we believe we've... Now, these are the people I know were there. Now, the people that we've been told were there, um, which the minor that was involved was also there. I cannot say that person's name, um, but we've been told that one of Chris Carden's brothers or both of his brothers, I believe we were, were told were there. Um, and there, I know one of his brothers, I was told one of his brothers and his girlfriend were there and children, like teenage, um, of age children. So not anyone underage that I know of other than the person that was um, involved. And I've heard lots of rumors, but, you know, I am i don't want you guys listening to the rumors um, around there regarding my dad's murder. So I'm not going to either. I mean, it's a bunch of hearsay. How do I get this person off of here, this... Do y'all see this in the comments? Something dot biz. How do I remove hide user on this channel? Add mop. You'll have to get on there and look at the live chat and see. Hold on, guys. I've got to report this person in the comments.
<laughs> Thank you, September Virgo. I'm a little slow and behind. I'm just now seeing it. Um, premeditated. Yes, 100% premeditated. And I want to tell you guys the what I was told about that. What I can actually tell um, as far as the premeditation of it. I never believed those lies. Anyway, your daddy wasn't that kind of a man. Oh, my God. No, he wasn't. He was oh, he was awesome. I mean, he was a man's man, and he would talk shit just like the rest of them. But kids, he loved kids. And, I mean, I have three daughters, and my kid, my girls loved him. Like, that was their papa. I mean, he was, I never, ever felt uncomfortable around my dad. I'll, we'll talk about that, but um trying to get through these comments i've already deleted them so you can't see them it was like some kind of porno weird stuff um some creeper i never believed her sick lies but i was hopeful that the investigators were able to discover the truth as well if they cared to yeah i mean i think they i mean it just seemed like they're okay they with I feel like they kind of stopped investigating. They've got someone there that's said they did it. They're charging her with it and they're good off and on to other things. Like it's bull crap. Your daddy called him out on his cheating and he didn't like that. Oh, well, yeah, he did. Chris put it in her head. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure that's what I think so as well. By the way, all the drugs they were on, it wouldn't be hard to basically brainwash them into this, a patsy. Yes. So one of the people that came <coughs> forward to us did say that Chris did put this into this person's head or into Sandra's head um, that you know, she was crazy. You know, I mean, I don't know her. I can't speak on that, but just from what I've been told, what I've seen in police reports, others that she has threatened before have came to me. And I mean, she was, she, she wasn't, I mean, she does need to be locked up. She doesn't need to be out in society. She is a scary person. And, you know, I think she would kill again or kill others or, you know, harm others. So I do believe that, you know, she is crazy, but also, I'm not positive that she is the one that did it or that I'm not positive. She's the only one that was involved as far as the physical violence that took place is what I will say with that. But I do believe that she was um, brainwashed and someone that came forward to us did say that this certain person, I won't say their name again, wanted my dad dead and well, there's this girl and she's just crazy enough to do it. So, you know, because she doesn't have a motive. There's no motive. Now, if he had tried to rape her, yes, that's motive. If that was true, not true. If, you know, he had tried to do something to someone else that she was close to, like she had also stated in one of her stories, then that's motive. But none of those things were true. He wasn't that person. He was nothing like that kind of person. So, yeah, she didn't have any motive. It's wild that he just gets to walk free regardless of what he does. His most recent stuff would have landed most of us in jail. You're exactly right. And two times. Ha I mean, this is. Um, I just was. I mean, this was recent, like October, I believe. You know, it, there was simultaneous the drugs and fire on me just get right. Okay, so one of his charges, um, I believe it was like last April. I can't say for sure because I don't have the dates in front of me. Sometime in it was a 2022, earlier in the year, he was pulled over, um, had a minor child with him, and he had several firearms and drugs on his purse in his vehicle. And he got out on a Sunday. He was arrested on a Friday. Well, it's actually early Saturday morning. And he walked out of the jail on a Sunday. How does that happen? I mean, if that had been any of us, no, that's not happening. But whatever. Um, 
I won't even go there. But so he did, he was charged with that. And then also there was another recent, um, I believe it was, I don't know if it was terroristic threatening or trespassing or both, but something similar to that. Someone had told me about it. I looked it up and it's been a month or so since I've looked at that. So there was, there's other stuff that he had, he's gotten in trouble for that, you know, you don't just walk. I mean, you would think that he would still be in jail or at least they would be doing, you know, prosecuting. Well, I mean, they are prosecuting. I shouldn't say that, but it just keeps getting put on the back burner. Um, continued. Oh, and also the first time, not the first time, but the incident I was talking about with the simultaneous possession of firearms and drugs and that he had a minor, he had his child with him. He had $10,000 in cash also. And one of the firearms was a stolen firearm that I believe was registered as stolen in the eighties or something. And he also had, I think it was a machete, some kind of a knife, but like who, who drives around with that kind of stuff in your vehicle? I mean, I know many of us drive around with guns and stuff, but like he had other weapons besides just firearms is what I'm trying to say. Like a machete, a knife, um, some other stuff that's just not a normal, like what you just drive around with. Unless maybe it's hunting season or something. It's all that Christian season. No, I'm sorry, September Virgo. Yeah, I understand. It is hard. It takes a long time before it actually sets in that your your mom or your dad is gone. <clears throat> Did you know that the recent long list is not even on the record anymore? I don't know. Oh, I guess, Crystal, you're responding to somebody else hold on i have lost my spot here trying to go back <laughs> oh are you talking about crystal when you said did you know the recent long list is not even on the record anymore do you mean like Chris Carden's, um, the list of like what all was in his vehicle or what he, what they found on him whenever he was arrested that time? Because I see we're right after tired of Perry County says what his stuff just disappeared. Okay. Crystal says, yes. Tired of Perry County. I know, right? Feel that he knows too much stuff on the, so that's why he always... Yeah, I have to agree with that, September Virgo. Guys, I'm slow. I oh, know there's so many more comments down there. I'm trying to get to them. Hold your finger down. It's, uh, sure, they are more visible. Sure, they are, as long as no one is bothering them, in parentheses, law, for information at the end of the day, they don't care. Sorry, not sorry. Yeah, you're right. She's crazy, but not crazy enough that she wasn't aware of what she was doing. I agree. I absolutely 100%. I mean, she uh, was found fit to proceed. She's actually um, pretty intelligent. If you read her, um, you know, the evaluation, she's, she's intelligent. I mean, but also wasn't Ted Bundy and like other serial killers like that. A lot of them have really high IQ sociopaths in that. And I do believe she is 100% a sociopath um, and absolutely aware of what she was doing. She did say that afterwards, um, after she'd killed him, that Chris had given her a handful of pills a of and a bunch of dope. She had like an eight ball of dope, what they call on the streets, an eight ball of dope and something else. Plus, she'd been drinking and now I do know she did say it was quoted either. Yeah, I think this is what she told when she was at the state hospital. Um, it was quoted that she said she did it 
right at, I believe after the murder is when she did said that she did the, the meth and all the pills. Now she was, I mean, we know they were all on meth or not all. I won't say that because I don't know that. I know she was on meth. I know she was a meth user. I know all of them that were living there at that time, other than the minor were drug users. So she was more than likely also high on meth whenever, um, she killed my dad. Have you or the family been provided with the text conversations from your dad's phone? No, we haven't. Um, one, they never found his phone. Two, his. Um, they can give us to the Well, they don't have his text conversations because we weren't able to get that from Apple. Um, he had an iPhone. He had just gotten an iPhone. He'd only had it for like a month. And so, um, but anyway, we weren't able to get any of that from Apple or from AT&T. We did get his, I do have his um, call log um, from AT&T. And I do want to say real quick while we're on that, because um, I noticed that her attorney in the bond hearing, because she was first being charged with first degree murder. And then there was a bond hearing because she wa she was trying to get a lesser bond. And that's the day that they changed her bond from, um, I think it was a million dollars to no bond. And her charges from first degree murder to capital murder. But I do, I do remember her attorney, um, Bill James is who's representing her. He stated while um, the investigator Seth Race was on the stand, he stated that Steve Face and my dad had called Sandra multiple times, and that's not true. It's actually the other way around, and we've got the phone records to prove that. It was Sandra was calling him from, I don't know where September keeps coming from, guys. It keeps coming out of my mouth. I don't know why I keep saying that, but in January, January 17th is when she started messaging him and started calling him. And I mean, my husband and I were down there a few times that she would call his phone and he would have to hang up or be like, quit calling me. Like, what do you want? Um, but no, we don't have the text conversations from my dad's phone. They said they weren't able to give those to us. I've tried to get um, some of that kind of stuff from Apple, but I'm my dad. Actually, I'm not the owner of that phone number. And my dad actually wasn't. It was his phone number. It was. His, he'd had that phone number since I think 2015, but one of my cousins actually had that line for my dad. And, um, so they have that phone number and have the, they're the only persons that can talk to AT&T regarding my dad's phone, um, texts, calls, any of that, or Apple for any of that information. Um, he had a toddler in the vehicle. Yes. The night that he, this not related to my dad's murder, but whenever he was pulled over and had the, got the simultaneous drug and weapon charge, um, he did have a toddler in the vehicle with him. Yes. No court on Sunday. Right. But he walked out of there on a Sunday. The average person doesn't anyway. You're right. Yes. It was way back when. I wonder if my Oh, there we go. Much easier. Okay. My touch screen wasn't working earlier. Now it is. So I can actually get through these comments quicker. Yes. I was talking about all of his charges. You can't find them on the court stuff. Okay. I didn't know that. I have a copy of those though, Crystal, I could send to you. Um, Your sweet September Virgo. That's wild that they don't have those charges on there anymore because they were because that's how I got them. I went to the courthouse and got those. I mean, I didn't make a special trip for it. I was already there, but I did get all of that from the courthouse and from the jail. Or it might have been the sheriff's office that I got that. I can't remember, Crystal. It isn't any better here in Saline. Oh, you're in Saline County, September Virgo? Me too. It's really bad all over the cover up that goes on. I know some think that there's not, but there is. Oh, yes. 
yeah, that's a whole nother video, but yeah, there's a lot of cover up and I know most people don't think that goes on or happens, but it does. Um, I know for a fact that it does. He is a tough attorney. Yes, he is. Why was she calling him if she didn't even really know him? Very good question, right? Why was she calling him over and over? During the YouTube hearing, the trooper or cop said there was another person in a hat seen on the video footage by a trailer or truck. Have you heard anything on this or seen the video evidence? Okay, I'm going to come right back to that. It is all gone. All of it. Look up his name. It's not even there anymore. That's really weird. I'll have to look that up. My thought is she and they pre-planned all of the prior phone and text messages to Steve. A certain someone always wears a hat. Well, I will tell you that one of the people that came forward to us that was staying down there at the time did say there were two cowboy hats. Now, I don't know what they were referring to, but he said there were two cowboy hats in the shadows. Whatever that means, meaning they were there at my dad's somewhere around behind that building in the shadows, in the dark where they weren't seen, but said they were there. They were watching it and there were a lot more people. Um Why was she calling him if she didn't really know him? That's a good question. So she started sending him messages on Facebook. January 1st on New Year's, my dad had sent out um, messages to all of his friends, all of his family. And he'd always sent messages every year um, around Christmas time and New Year's to Chris Carden's family. Because that was, you know, those of you that know my dad know that he was like a brother to them. Like that was my dad, like my dad's family for 20 years. I mean that they were very, he was very close to them. And even though he didn't still communicate with Chris or any of them anymore, he still loved the kids and, you know, he still cared about all of them. And so he would send them every year, a happy new year, Merry Christmas message. And he did send, um, this, that year, uh, 2019, um, Sandra was one of them because she was living down there. Um, she didn't, he didn't just send it to Sandra. He sent it to, you know, Chris's son and others. Um, probably. Yeah. I think he did send it to Chris too. He sent it to everybody and said, happy new year. My dad really just wanted peace. He wanted it to all go away. And even though, you know, him and Chris had their differences and Chris absolutely hated my dad. I mean, my dad so loved them and, you know, it just, it was what it was, but, um, he cared about them. So anyway, he had sent that message and never thought anything about it, you know, and then here we go on, or I don't know why I keep saying September. That is so crazy y'all. Um, so the 17th on January 17th, he gets a, a message on Facebook from Sandra and I can't remember exactly. I don't know where my phone went, what her first message was, but I know at one point, it's like she was trying to she was trying to get him to sleep with her or she was trying to come on to him because she was saying that she was just looking for a good time. Um, on January, it was a Wednesday. It was either the 23rd or 22nd of January. Now, this is like right before, like just weeks before his murder. He calls me the next morning on a Thursday morning. He calls me and this is early because my dad was an early bird. Like he got up at four o'clock in the morning. Not me. I'm not a morning person, but he called me on his way into work like seven or eight. And I've even got the the call recorded because all of my calls were, are recorded on my phone. But um, he said that this crazy, you know what, was at his house at midnight last night and her and Mae Blevins in May's black Dodge charger and they were beating on his door. He didn't answer the door, you know, um, but it makes me wonder, you know, what if he had answered the door? Were they going to kill him that night? Like what, what were they? I mean, it seems like this was like, I know for sure. Like, I don't know for sure. I know we've been told and this person has even came and spoke with our attorney as a witness that, it was at least pre-planned on Friday before. So he was murdered on a Saturday, Sunday, Saturday night, Sunday morning. But the Friday before there were some people who all met up at a certain person's camper or trailer and they talked about it, what they were going to do and what their story was going to be. Um, 
you know, the whole rape, he tried to rape me or whatever thing. So I am pretty positive. I mean, I know I, I can't say for a fact because it wasn't, wasn't there. Right. But I know that it was at least premeditated the Friday before, but it kind of seems like if you really look at it and look at all the different parts to it all, seems like they were trying to like, they kind of concocted this idea a little while before, like possibly a month or so before, you know, for she's messaging him, she's calling his phone all the time. She's coming and knocking on his door at midnight. Who does that? I mean, it's one thing if you know the person there, you're your friend, there's somebody you hang out with, but that wasn't the case. You know, they'd never met up in person like that. And so that was kind of odd. Um, so it does kind of seem like maybe they were trying to do something to, you know, get him to actually physically interact with them so that they, their story would be more plausible that he tried to rape someone. I think she was trying to come on to him to get his guard down, so to speak. Absolutely. I do. And I also think that um, this is just my opinion, guys. But, you know, any of you that knew them knew that her and Chris's relationship was very. Um, what did you say? On the, ro on the rocks. On the rocks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was a lot of um, chaos and toxicity to it. And this is just stuff I've learned since. You know, he. I guess they had split up at some time and he'd gotten another girl pregnant. And I know that this sent her over the edge because there's a police report where she threatened to cut that baby out of her belly and um, of that woman's belly. I mean, this is a sick twist. She's sick. She's freaking <laughs> twisted y'all. Um, so I also think that a part of her was trying to get back at Chris and she did want to sleep with my dad for that reason. Um, that being one of the reasons that she wanted to sleep with him, that, you know, that used to be Chris's best friend. And, you know, what person's going to piss Chris off more than it being Steve face and my dad, you know, for her to go and sleep with. So I do think that she was absolutely trying to sleep with my dad, but my dad wouldn't go there. He was not going there. Um, May hinted that she thought they were going for a threesome. Oh, that's right. Okay. I remember me and you talking about this, Crystal. There's so much. And you know, because you and I have talked quite a bit, like how much stuff I've been told and how many people have came to me and I can't keep up with every, everyone and all the stories because I can't, you know, it's, it's hard unless I actually go back and look to know what's actually somebody telling me that they know this for a fact because they were there, they heard it, or if it's a rumor they heard, but I remember now you did tell me that you spoke to her. I believe somebody spoke to her and may had said that she thought they were going to my dad's house for a threesome. Now, not the day that he was murdered, but the 23rd or 22nd, I believe it was of January, um, 2019 when they went down there. Isn't that what, uh, Sandra had told her? that Sandra had kind of put it in her head, like we're going to go down there and we're going to have a threesome or something like that. She did not say that. About, right. She didn't say that about the second time, like the night of the murder. She said that about the first time they went down there. Yeah. And if that's the case, if she really thought, and, and I do know that just from what I know of her, you know, cause I did know May personally. Um, I had met her, you know, about a year or so before the murder and she's a little bit freaky deaky when it comes to sex and stuff. So I can see her thinking, okay, cool. I'm down for that. Um, but she must not have known my dad very well. Cause he, he wasn't, he would not have been going for that. I believe they would at least tried if he had opened the door. Yes, I do too. And that's something that we even talked about with, you know, my dad's best friend. Um, that if dad had opened the door that night, that might have been the night that he might have been killed that night or they might have tried to that night. Plus, then the land that he had just finished paying for that you guys lost. Okay, yeah. So he had, yeah, that was, um, 
another thing to get into that he was, he had been paying off the land to the Cardins um, up until 2015, whenever someone else paid off the loan and my dad paid them back, but he had gotten that paid for. <coughs> also, another motive, which wouldn't be a motive for Sandra, but could be a motive for the other person. So my dad's land, um, because he was, well, it was paid off at the time whenever he died. But before then, he first had bought it from one of the Cardins or something like that. It was something to do with the Cardins. He was paying them for the land, for the mortgage loan. And then um, Kelly Cardin's mom, huh? He was paying somebody else. Right. Well, then in 2015, when they had the fallen out, Kelly Cardin's mom paid that off for him. She paid what he owed to the Cardins. And so my dad started paying her monthly payments. And so as an assurance that he would pay this back, he put Chris Cardin's son on his title or on his, I guess on his title, you know, that if on his deed, that if he passed away or if anything happened, it would go to him, to Chris Cardin's son as an assurance. Now this, he was supposed to have gone back and had his name taken off of there when it was paid off. Um, and this, it had been paid off. I don't know how long before exactly before he was murdered that it was paid off, but over a year. Um, because I remember my husband and him talking one day and something had came up and my dad was like, ah, everything you see out here is paid for. Like I own everything. This is all mine, you know? And, and he had actually, yeah, he had actually told me to go down and fix it and get that name off of there and a lot of things. And that was two weeks before he was murdered that he told me to go and have his name taken off of there. So that could, you know, and I didn't even think about that at first whenever my dad was first killed, but it hit me like a couple weeks later, like, Oh my gosh, you know, that would be motive for the Cardins, you know, for my dad to be dead because they would get his land, you know, but fortunately, um, that all worked out where um, there were some cattle stolen from someone uh, off of my dad's land after the murder. And so instead of us pressing charges, because it would, it was some pretty serious, it would have been serious charges. Uh, we agreed to, um, that Chris's son would sign the land, sign his, off his part of the land, which was a joint ownership, whatever um, he would sign the title over to us or the deed and in order or in agreement for us not to press charges. And, you know, my dad's land, that place meant more. And I don't want any, I don't want to see anybody, especially an elderly person going to prison. You know, it was just a sad, messed up situation. Um, Yes. Yes. Tired of Perry County. Didn't my brother date her? Yes. My brother and May. That's how I knew May. Um, I know I can't tell you how long before my dad's murder they dated. Um, they'd been, they'd been together maybe a year, maybe more than a year. I can't say, um, because I don't, you know, was it my relationship, but I know they were together for quite a while because there was a time that they both were trying trying to get clean and stay away from Perry County and the drugs and all of that. And they came here to mine and my husband's house for a place to stay. And it was, you know, agreed upon that there would be no drugs done here or anything like that. And um, I actually liked May, you know, I mean, she was very honest. And that's one thing that baffles me is like, you know, had me and May met, on our own without my brother introducing us, would we have hung out and been friends? No, I'm, I mean, I, I'm friends with every, I mean, I, I, I love everyone. I guess many of you that know me know that, but like, would we have been hanging out? You know, no, but she was in my home because of my brother and there was something about her. Like I just trusted her and she would tell you straight up. Yes. I I'm trying to get clean. I've been doing meth. I've, dealt meth. I was a dope dealer, all of this stuff. And she promised, I will not bring that in your home. I will not bring that she, into your driveway. And, and she didn't. And she'd left to, you know, there was a time that she had left to go get high and had came back. And I had actually confronted them one time because I was like, these people are high in my house and I'm not 
going for it, you know? And so her and I went outside and we talked and I mean, she cried and she was like, Stacy, I promise you, I would not do that in your home. And she said, I, we left, you know, I left to go and get high and came back. But, and I know many of you that don't know me or know about all of that, you're probably like, okay, yeah, whatever. But I mean, maybe I'm gullible, maybe I'm a sucker, but I honestly believed her and I feel in my heart that, you know, she was telling the truth and she just, there was other things and I won't say cause they're personal things, but yeah, there were, the yeah, well, that's true. I won't say that either. Cause you know, but, um, there were other things that she would say to me that were personal, you know, that I'm not going to share on here. Cause even though she was involved with my dad, I still, I mean, it's, it's, you know, integrity and respect. I'm not going to do that to anyone, but, um, there were things that she confided in me about that it just finding out that she was involved in this with my dad th really threw me for a loop. It was very hard to believe, but yes, they were dating up until actually January 14th. It was my brother and her had went down to the Cardins to, for a place to stay. And they kicked my brother out. He had to leave, but May didn't want to leave. She stayed behind um, at the Cardins. So I didn't even know that she knew the Cardins, any of that, which, you know, I'm I'm not really around Perry County and I wasn't around Perry County, not even then, unless I was going to see my dad, like I could have could care less about that place. But, um, so I didn't even know that she knew them, but I guess she knew them well enough that she felt comfortable to stay there. And so she stayed, my brother left and oddly or coincidentally, just a couple of days after, um, my brother leaves the Cardins is when Sandra starts messaging my dad on Facebook. Um, they are just shysty. Is that the right word? Shysty? Yeah. What about the troopers on the roads the night all this happened or cops? Many people seen the one at the top of the mountain around Copeland and would shine his light in faces of drivers and others. What a dick. Wow. But I yeah, there, there were roadblocks everywhere. But she was saying that one of the cops on top of the mountain around Copeland would shine his light in the faces of drivers and others. Okay. So, yeah, I didn't know. I mean, I can't say. Yeah, that's something that we did here that, that before we even knew about his murder, that there was people on Facebook asking him. So right. They was looking for Steve Faison. Yeah, that's what I want to talk about. No. So We're this is going. another weird. Um, there's so much to this. It's so complex. I won't be able to get into all of it tonight because I mean we'll have to have many you know future videos. But um, to kind of set the record straight on like my perspective of things, I guess you could say. So that night there were roadblocks. So we didn't know about it until um, someone had came to me afterwards and was was telling us that there were roadblocks in Perry County that night. And we found out since that. Your yeah, I do have a screenshot. And, and I want to tell you guys about that because it's really crazy. Um, it's um, anyway. So there were there's three. Like if you're going to go to my dad's in Bigelow, there's three ways you would get there if you're outside of Bigelow. And there's like three different junctions and all three of those junctions. From what I was told, there were roadblocks. Also, so someone, um, and I've got the screenshots of it. There was, so Saturday night, this is the night my dad's actually being murdered. Um, the murder's taking place or is about to take place. So at that time, people were talking about the roadblocks on Facebook. I wasn't aware of this till after. So just know that when I'm telling you the story. Huh? It was. Yeah, it was 11 something p.m. So somebody had posted on one of the pages on Facebook, you know, there's roadblocks. Anybody know what the roadblocks are about? And so a lot of people were commenting on that post. Um, and someone commented on Saturday night, February 8th, the night that my dad's, well, to our knowledge, he hadn't even been murdered yet or, 
you know, even after the fact, like he had not been murdered yet when this post was put on Facebook about the roadblocks. And when this, that some girl had said, well, I heard they're looking for Steve Faison that he's missing. Why would, or well, she said, I heard they're looking for Steve Faison and the girl that made the posts commented, why would they be looking for Steve Faison? And the other girl um, said, well, we heard that he was missing or whatever. And then she says, and this came from, and I'm going to say your name because it's on there. I've got the screenshot. I'm not going to say that you actually said this, but I will say that the girl that said they're looking, we, I heard they're looking for Steve Face, and she said it ca came from Kathy Lane. Kathy Lane is a deputy police officer, uh, sheriff's deputy in Perry County. And now if that was true and it had came from Kathy Lane that the police had the roadblocks out because they're looking for Steve face. And I'm not saying Kathy, that you said this, I'm saying someone else said you said this and I've got the screenshot to prove it. So don't try to sue me for defamation of character. This is what I read. Um, this girl says that Kathy Lane told her mother-in-law, someone's mother, whoever the girl was, mother-in-law. I don't even know the girl's name. I couldn't tell you guys. I'd have to go back and find the screenshot. Okay, so if that's true, why are they looking for Steve Faison? He's about to be murdered. Why the are there roadblocks and they're looking for my dad? He wasn't in any kind of trouble. He stayed to himself. There's no reason why the night of his murder, the police should be looking for him. And if you, if it's because he was murdered, then it just, that doesn't even make sense. It's not plausible that it's because he was, I mean, because no one knew the call didn't come in until, and actually I've got a recording of the call to not to dispatch, but to the fire, I guess between dispatch and the fire department. I have a recording of that. Um, and it came in at 5.11, around 5.11 a.m., or somewhere around 5 in the morning, that there was a house fire. Not that there was a murder. So that there's so much to this that, you guys, I'm telling you, it does not add up. There is so much more to it. And, like, it has made me feel like a crazy person for three years with all of this information coming to me. And it's like, okay, any sane person, any intelligent or half intelligent person is going to be able to look at all of this and hear all of this, that there's some information to back it up or proof to back up this stuff that, okay, something's not right here. This is not just your everyday. And I don't mean to say every day, but this is not just your, the homicide you see on the news most of the time. Like this is, there's so much more to it. This is it's not like these two people knew each other. I mean, they knew each other, but there's no motive other than their lies and just a lot more that doesn't add up and it does not make sense. Okay. I might have skipped some comments. I'll go back to this. Did your dad not go to Kathy and or whichever and said something bad is going to happen to me? Yes. Yes. Okay. So that day around... Five, six, seven, I don't know, somewhere around in that time, my dad was, you know, at his best friend Floyd's house, and I believe he was in Kathy's house, Kathy, the, de the almost a detective, the um, deputy, and I think he was fixing the water lines or something like that, and he did say to them that either he thought something was going to happen to him or whatever, but he, he said, if something happens to me either something is going to happen to me or I feel like something's going to happen to me or if something happens to me, I want you to look at Chris Carden and Sandra Rappel. My dad wouldn't just say stuff like that. He was not, he wouldn't have wanted to come across that way to scare someone or to freak someone out. He was not a, he didn't seek attention. He wasn't, for drama, none of that. So that was a big deal for my dad to have said that, you know, if something happens to me, that means he was thinking something might happen to him, you know. Um, like a house of dominoes. Yep. Corruption. You're right. Corruption. Oh, you're sweet September Virgo. Yes, I do. Um, 
but I don't take it as weakness. I feel like it's a strength, actually. No, the Cardins did not get the land back. They were going to get the land back, but because we had made a, a, an agreement, um, well, I, my attorney, we had agreed not to press charges for the cattle theft um, in order, you know, in exchange for the deed to be, or their name to be taken off the deed. Yes, it is sad that May took that path because she actually um, was, I believe, a, a decent human being. She did have a good heart. I mean, I think she did, but I don't know if you want to say it's drugs that do that to people. I've known people that have done that stuff and they'd never kill somebody. But I mean, I don't know. The pure evil. These people are just pure evil. Yes, what he is saying. Okay, there were rumors that your brother knew things were going to happen to your daddy because of May. Hard question, but any true. I don't mind if the questions are hard. I would actually like for people to ask the hard questions because that's what I want to address to kind of, you know, get to the the truth of some of the rumors and maybe put a stop to some of the stuff. Um, I never heard that he knew things were going to happen to my dad. And I don't believe he knew things were going to happen to my dad. But it has been said that, and now this is a hard thing that some of you might not want to hear or listen to, especially if I have family members watching, but I'm just going to go ahead and get into it. Um, so, you know, my dad was charged in 2012 for uh, molestation, which didn't, he did not, absolutely did not do. Um, but as far as my brother goes, when May and my brother were staying here, we, you know, her and my brother were having some issues and, you know, she wanted to help him or how can, you know, she wanted to relate to him, communicate with him, whatever, you know, how, you know, you're just normal relationship issues. And we had all talked and we, some things were brought up about mine and my brother's past when we were little that have nothing to do with my dad, but, and May knew that we weren't talking about my dad, but, um, I'm not going to speak for my brother, but I will speak for me. We did not have, we weren't, when we were very young, I was raised by my grandparents and my brother was too, up until he was in third grade. Um, and when Todd was in third grade, he went to go live with our dad. Um, but I didn't. And, life was not good. My grandfather was very abusive. I was abused every single day. And so was my brother and he was beaten. And I watched a lot of this happen and was forced to watch this happen as a little girl. And my dad didn't know about this. My dad was not that kind of person. Um, I kept all of that from my dad until 2016. My dad and I were talking in the backyard or in right kind of where near he near where he was murdered and I had told him we were talking about when we were younger and I said dad why didn't you take me when you took Todd and he said you were attached to your granny you wouldn't have gone and I said yeah you're right I said but I wish you would have and I wasn't blaming him and I didn't want him to feel guilty and he knew that but um, he told me why he took Todd. It was because he knew that Todd was being abused, that he was my grandfather. My dad's dad was hurting him. And I said, he was hurting me too, but not in the same way. And I said, what happened to, I'm assuming to you guys, when y'all were younger, it happened to me. And he, that's the very first time and the only time I ever saw tears drop from my dad's eyes. And he turned and looked at me and he said, I would have shot that son of a bitch between his eyes had I known. And he would have, I believe he would have, and my dad would have been in prison and would not have been murdered. But had I ever told my dad that, you know, that's how that would have been. My dad was a good man. He didn't stand for 
child abuse and justice of any kind. He was a very fair person. Um, he didn't have the best childhood, but I can tell you one thing. I know what some of you guys are probably thinking, you know, well, most people that are abused, a lot of them become abusers themselves. And that is true. And, but my dad was not one of them. I am not one of those people. Um, we became better because of it. And so this kind of, we shared this with May and to an extent. Now it has been rumored and several, and I know she must have said this because several people have came to me and they would have known that this conversation took place. We, nobody would have known, right? But several people came and said that May told some people that my dad molested and abused my brother, that my brother had told May this. And that's simply not true. What it was is I told May things that happened to us when we were little that my grandfather, my dad's dad did, who my dad's dad is dead and gone. My grandfather's dead and gone. We were not talking about my dad. And May knew that we were not talking about my dad because it was reiterated to her that that is why my dad picked my brother up and had him go live with him is because to get him away from the abuse. Um, so yes, that is some of the rumors that are specul you know, that are going around that, you know, people have, you know, been talking about and they've twisted it. <sighs> um, What else? Have I been on here for a long time? I feel like we've been on here for a while. I don't want to go too late because I know people don't want to watch for that long. Um, we're not going to do in a four or five hour uh, video here. We can pick back up another day. I'm trying to make sure I haven't missed any comments. Now, there are some things on the next video that I do want to talk about, and that is the rumors and all of the belief. You know, there's several people in Perry County that do believe my dad was a pedophile and I want to address that. That is what I want to talk about in the next video we do. And um, I want to kind of get into without um, saying people's names, but I want to get into why, where it came from the person that first said that he molested them and why she said it and how it was sort of a revenge thing. Um, and without telling any other people's names, but that have came and given me information, but I want to talk on that and how she has retracted what she said. Now, before my dad was murdered, she, the girl went back and told her dad and other people that it wasn't true, that he didn't do that to her. Um, but then, of course, you all know, as soon as my dad's murdered, she gets back on that bandwagon because it's attention, right? Um, and starts saying, you know, Sandra's a hero and she killed a pedophile and that's bullcrap. And the girl that's saying it knows it's bullcrap because she knows it did not happen to her. And she knows why she said what she said about my dad um, back in 2012. Um, but we'll get into that in another video. But I do want to touch on that because that's been a touchy subject that a lot of people haven't really wanted to come and ask me about or say anything to me about it. But a lot of people have heard it. And I mean, we're, I'm human too. And I know that if he wasn't my dad and I'd heard this story the way that you guys, you know, just as a, an outsider, I would, wonder. I would wonder, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I would have doubts and I would think mm, he probably was a pedophile and there's probably a lot more to this but that's simply not the case I mean I understand I have no ill will toward anyone that believes that he's a pedophile or believed he was or anybody that just simply doubts and wonders you know I mean it's human nature to wonder and that's that's kind of a big deal and I agree with most people that pedophiles should not be on this earth Absolutely. Um, firsthand, I, I mean, I, I experienced it.